Hello everyone. Welcome to 360 on History. Please check out the website 360onhistory.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel 360 on History and join us on social media. Today we are talking about Hypatia, who was a Greek philosopher, mathematician and astronomer who lived in Alexandria in Egypt in the 4th century BC when it was part of the Eastern Roman Empire. She was admired for her groundbreaking ideas but was eventually killed by Christian fanatics seemingly for those same ideas. Hypatia was born between 350 to 270 AD. Her father, Theon of Alexandria, was also a mathematician and astronomer and was the head of an exclusive, highly prestigious school. Nothing is known of Hypatia's mother in any of the known sources. Hypatia was a Neoplatonist and during her time the Alexandrian school was renowned for its philosophy when Alexandria was regarded as second only to Athens as the philosophical capital of the Greco-Roman world. It was in this world that Hypatia taught students from all over the Mediterranean after having studied philosophy herself in Athens. It is said that she would wear the robes of the academic elite something that only men were allowed to do at the time although there is no information about her publishing any original works she has been described as a universal genius more of a teacher and commentator than an innovator during this time scholars preserved classical mathematical works and commented on them to develop their arguments rather than publishing original works Hypatia wrote and spoke in Greek which was the language spoken by educated people across the eastern mediterranean she is known to have edited at least book 3 of ptolemy's almagest which supported the geocentric model of the universe you know where the earth is the center of the solar system furthermore she is widely thought to have constructed not invented planes astrolabes which were used to observe examine and measure celestial bodies in the night sky and she was also credited with constructing hydrometers which are instruments to determine the density or specific gravity of liquids as an astronomer she also charted the course of planets and stars in addition to philosophy and ptolemaic astronomy She also taught Euclidean mathematics to her students. She was a gifted orator and her speeches on Plato and his work enthralled her audience, earning her wide respect by the city's intellectuals and scholars. She was also respected by the Alexandrian Christian community who admired her chastity because Hypatia was celibate and remained so till her death. Her celibacy also made her popular in the wider Greek society which highly valued it as a virtue. Unfortunately, it was Christian fanatics who killed her. Hypatia practiced paganism at a time when Christianity was growing in Alexandria. Theophilus was the bishop of Alexandria from 382 to 412 AD. Although he was militantly opposed to Neoplatonism, He respected Hypatia and it was because of his support that she became popular in the city. After Theophilus died unexpectedly in 412 AD without naming a successor, a power struggle broke out between his nephew Cyril and another bishop known as Timothy. Cyril won and started persecuting those who had supported Timothy, even closing down their churches and confiscating their property. In this tense environment Hypatia's school and followers developed a distrust of Cyril with some of her previous students asking her to intervene on behalf of two individuals impacted by the ongoing civil strife In 412 AD there was a Jewish led massacre in Alexandria after Jewish feasts were regulated by the Roman prefect Orestes because they occurred in large crowds and caused riots the jews rebelled and this possibly resulted in the massacre reacting to this 
Cyril closed all synagogues, confiscated properties belonging to Jews and expelled a number of Jews from the city. Orestes, the Roman prefect of Alexandria who was also a close friend of Hypatia and a recent convert to Christianity, sent a scathing report to the emperor, having been outraged by Cyril's actions. This caused further escalation, a riot broke out and a group of Cyril's Christian followers nearly killed Orestes. As punishment, Orestes had Ammonius, the monk who had started the riot, publicly tortured to death. The feud between Orestes and Cyril magnified. Orestes frequently asked Hypatia for advice because she was respected amongst the people of the city and had not been involved in any of the stages of the conflict. Cyril and his followers decided to discredit her and tarnish her reputation by spreading rumours that she was fanning the conflict and that she practised idol worship and satanic rituals. The writings of the 7th century Egyptian Coptic bishop John of Nicu allege in his chronicle, according to Socrates Scholasticus, a Greek Christian church historian in the 5th century, during Lent, a Christian season of fasting before Easter, in March 415 AD, a mob of Christians under the leadership of a lector named Peter raided Hypatia's carriage as she was travelling home. They tortured her while dragging her through the streets of Alexandria and eventually took her to the Caesarian, a former pagan temple and centre of the Roman imperial cult in Alexandria that had been converted into a Christian church. Here, they stripped her naked and tortured her even more using something called the ostraca, which is translated into either roof tiles or oyster shells. They even cut out her eyeballs, tore her body to pieces, dragged the pieces through the city to finally burn them outside the city limit. This was a punishment meted out to the worst criminals in Alexandria. According to Socrates Scholasticus, Hypatia's murder was more about the political dispute between the prefect of Alexandria, Orestes, and the bishop of Alexandria, Cyril then about religious beliefs. Cyril's followers thought she was instrumental in turning Orestes against them and used her philosophy and pagan beliefs as a reason to kill her. Since her death, she has been mentioned in various letters, novels and books. Even Voltaire mentions her as a believer in the laws of rational nature and the capacities of the human mind free of dogmas. Writers have also written her biographies based entirely on fictional accounts and a movie was also made, but very, very loosely, based on her life. Whether the reasons for Hypatia's murder were religious or political, there is no doubt that she was used as a pawn by powerful men and killed long before her time. She may have contributed immensely to the world had she lived longer. Thank you for joining me on 360 on History. See you next time.